In this video, I'm going to show you how to evaluate multicollinearity in the context of multiple regression in SPSS on the basis of evaluating two indices, tolerance and variance inflation factor. Now to get those in regression, go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and then click Statistics, and make sure you have Collinearity Diagnostic selected. And then click Continue, and click OK. And that selection will add results to the right side of the coefficients table. And here they are next to the semi-partial and partial and zero order correlations. You can see that you can see that tolerance was estimated at 0.672 for both education and IQ. It will always be the case that in a multiple regression with just two predictors, that the tolerance estimate will be identical for both of them. As soon as you get to three or more predictors, chances are they will no longer be the same. As I note in the textbook, tolerance should be at least 0 0.10 or greater in order to feel comfortable that multicollinearity is not a problem for that particular variable. So in this case, 0.672 implies that 67.2% of the variance in education is unique to education. It's not accounted for by the other predictor or predictors in the model. In this case, we only have one predictor. So if you look at the correlation between education and IQ, I'll show you how tolerance is actually calculated. You get a 0.572 correlation. So if I squared that 0.572 times 0.572, I get 0.327. If I subtract 0.327 from 1, 1 minus 0.327, I get 0.673 which is rounded the same thing as the tolerance level here. So tolerance is 1 minus r squared, where r squared equals the association between the predictor and the other predictors in the model. So of course it's going to be 0.672 for both education and IQ because they share the same bivariate correlation. Again, as soon as you get to three predictors or more, that no longer holds in practice. They will be different. So because 0.672 is much greater than 0.10, I don't feel like there's a problem with multicollinearity in this case. Now the variance inflation factor is very closely related to tolerance, in fact by a factor of the reciprocal. So if you go 1 divided by 0.672, you get the variance inflation factor, 1.48. And I recommend that the variance inflation factor should not be greater than 10 because 1 divided by 0 0.10, which is the minimum tolerance level, equals 10. And in this case, the variance inflation factor is 1.487, which is much less than 10. Now, the variance inflation factor implies that the standard errors associated with the unstandardized beta weights are 1.487 times larger than they would otherwise be if there was no correlation between the variables at all. So if the correlation was zero, these standard errors would be 1.49 times smaller. Of course, this isn't a problem. You expect the variance inflation factor to be greater than zero because you wouldn't do a multiple regression unless your variables were intercorrelated to some degree. It wouldn't be an interesting analysis to run a multiple regression if none of your predictors were intercorrelated. So don't be afraid of seeing some values here. Just make sure that tolerance is 0.10 or greater and the variance inflation factor is not greater than 10. 